hymn of the week. Um, the hymn this week is uh, The Love of God. I'll ask uh, Jeno to introduce it. Uh, so the hymn is Love of God. Uh, I want to share a small uh, I think I read in an article about the love of God and also some history about this song. Um, so we know this incident where uh, uh, Jesus comes to the, uh, uh, walks through Sam uh, Samaria and he comes to the well where he meets a Samaritan woman. And uh, there was this article which compared some of the features that were similar to Jacob and Jesus. How Jacob left his home, Jesus also left his father's house and came. How Jacob... Uh, was uh, not loved by his brother, how Jesus was betrayed by his brother, how Jacob didn't have a stone to lay his head, how Jesus tells even the Son of Man doesn't have a stone to lay his head, and other similarities among this. So, uh, the article said that uh, we can consider John invites us to, uh, because uh, when Jesus comes to the Samaritan woman, the well was actually Jacob's well. It was uh, on a land that was owned by Jacob, uh, which was given to Joseph and came down. So the thing I want us to look now is uh, when we know when, how Jacob met Rachel. Jacob comes to this well, he meets Rachel, and uh, Bible says she was uh, more beautiful than Leah, and uh, so she is uh, Laban's daughter, more beautiful. And so uh, the article asked, like you know, it's written that you know, imagine yourself uh, if the whole of heaven knows the story of Jacob, how Jacob met Leah, how uh, cunning Jacob was waiting for such a beautiful, pure woman on a well. And here the Son of Man sent by God is coming to the Samaritan, uh, Samaria, the well in the, uh, that is Jacob's well. He's coming and the you know, whole of heaven is waiting to see who the father has kept for his own son, who is not cunning, who you know, deserves the best. And there comes the woman uh, who is not really uh, the definition of uh, purity, not really the, the beauty of holiness or anything. And she comes and, uh, you know, behold, Jesus uh, fills her heart, you know, and in the subsequent verse we see he, uh, she goes back uh, and calls everyone, just like how Rachel went and called, every, called his dad and came. So the thing I want us to look is, she asks one question, are you greater than our father Jacob? And uh, surely Jacob's love, Jesus' love is much more greater than Jacob's love. Uh, Jacob could only love something that was beautiful, that was pure, but you see Jesus becomes, uh, makes the uh, thing that is without beauty more beautiful, makes the unholy holy. And I think this is the love that struck Frederick Lehman one Sunday evening when he was uh, listening to a sermon on love of God and uh, he was filled with God's love that he wanted to, he, next day, he is basically a, a a man who packs oranges and few things. So next day he's in work, uh, words are pouring into his heart. He wants to write something, so he goes home, takes a paper, writes something. So he writes two stanzas, but in those days and norms, at least you need three stanzas to pen a song. So he's wondering, where can I get the third verse? And he remembers a friend of him gave a piece of paper with some English words which had good poetry. So he puts that, and here we have the hymn. And that's a history behind this third verse. So he started digging and he realized that that was a mental asylum, a prison for uh, mentally ill people and a man died there. And when the people went inside to clean the room, they found this third verse written on the wall in English. And okay, probably the man felt it very deep in his heart, he wrote, they all thought. After a few years, they found that thousand years ago, a Jewish poet wrote this in his own language in a poem called Akmadut. And uh, uh, it is fascinating that how a man who doesn't believe in Jesus, Messiah, wrote these beautiful words in a foreign language and then it became, came to English and then it has to come to Frederick Lehman and currently here. And uh, I just want to paraphrase the third meaning which uh, Chandra Singh uncle also told. It just goes like, if consider the entire ocean to be ink and the entire sky to be a paper, and uh, every stalk in earth is a quill and every one of us are uh, meant to write. 
if we have to light the love of god the entire ocean will become dry and still the paper can't be held from sky to sky so the love of god Let's go.